Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada That Didn't. Today we're talking about statements made in court, but not in court. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Nelson Taeyong Tong was charged with murder. While waiting for a case management hearing in court dealing with his matter, he interrupted proceedings in another matter and blurted out a number of statements that were inculpatory. The court did not interpret those statements as uh, um, guilty pleas, but the Crown ultimately relied on them in Mr. Taeyong Tong's trial as admissions to having committed the offence. The court found that those admissions were made voluntarily and with an operating mind, and then relied upon them in part for its conviction of Mr. Taeyong Tong for murder. And this case raises important issues about the question of whether or not statements that you make in a court proceeding that doesn't relate to you can be used against you. Ordinarily, if you were in court and you were testifying in a proceeding, you could shield yourself from self-incrimination by invoking certain procedures. But what happens if you're not under oath and you're not testifying? Shouldn't statements that you make in court, particularly in the course of frustration that your case isn't being heard fast enough or soon enough by the judge, not be held against you? Shouldn't certain provisions apply in situations where people are in effectively what can feel like an oppressive atmosphere of a court and a judge and a potential that you could be found guilty where somebody might not understand the nature of the proceedings and everything that's going on? Because court is confusing for people who don't go there every day like lawyers. The impact of using statements that are made while interrupting another proceeding where there's no opportunity to cross-examine or challenge them, where they're just blurted out, has never really been considered by the Supreme Court of Canada. And while there are ordinary rules about statements that accused persons blurt out admitting to their guilt, doesn't the context of it being made in a court proceeding where somebody is waiting for their case to be heard change that analysis? Shouldn't there be some further scrutiny about the nature in which those statements are, are made before it's just determined? that it's just a random statement that's been made by somebody that's admitting to their guilt. In these circumstances, the court at the Supreme Court of Canada really should have had the opportunity to further analyze the atmosphere that can affect people when they are sitting in a courtroom and the atmosphere and how it can lead to statements that are admissions of guilt that maybe aren't actually voluntary in the context. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court of Canada didn't take the opportunity to consider this and again has essentially failed to take the opportunity to hear a number of cases about out-of-court statements being used to prove guilt in very confusing ways. It'll take another case for us to determine whether or not this type of thing should be used against a person, but in the meantime, I expect lawyers will be advising their clients to, at all times, keep their mouths shut in court. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases that Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.